Discussion of Truth here, uh, Wednesday, coming in at the 4 o'clock hour, um, Eastern Standard Time. Been fluctuating, you can check the website out on, uh, on, on various uh, 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 broadcast times as we fluctuate from the 4 o'clock hour to the 5 o'clock hour, starting sometimes as early as the 3 o'clock hour. Of course, this is all due to uh, this uh, COVID-19 situation. Um, but, uh, what a very interesting, uh, presidential debate took place last night, uh, in, uh, at the Cleveland uh, Clinic. Um, look, quite frankly, I think on many levels, uh, because he was unable to, um, sustain, uh, sustain a, uh, level head, I think in many ways Donald Trump made a fool of himself. Now, um, just as uh, uh, just as so, Joe Biden made a fool of himself. Um, I, I, all three, even the moderator uh, Wallace, made made a fool of himself. This was this was by far. It was a total bleep show. Okay. Um, what a fiasco, what a chaotic, uh, situation, but really symbolic of what the global environment is today. And certainly what we've allowed this country to become, um, Trump taking shots at Biden for his socialist agenda. Um, you know, Biden kept this for the most part, he kept uh, he kept his um, he kept he kept his cool, if you will, Joe Cool. Okay, he kept he kept a uh, more or less diplomatic approach <laughs> to dealing with Donald Trump. However, calling the man a clown, a fool, the worst president in American history, uh, you know, those that's not diplomatic at all. Um, so. But I think, you know, out of the gate, um, out of the gate, I think I heard Biden say in greeting Donald on stage, how you doing, man? I think that's what I heard through the microphone as I was watching uh, via YouTube, uh, the live broadcast. Okay, now what seemed to start out civil, Trump was definitely the aggressor. Trump came out of the gate uh, talking over Biden, and then eventually talking over Wallace. Uh, you know, many times Trump demanding a response to a statement that Biden had made. And what you're, what and so that so so from that perspective, it was very, uh, very hostile. But what you're what you're looking at, in my view, is, you know, and 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 again, Biden downplaying the threat of Antifa. Antifa and BLM have been, from from what news sources report and how credible they are, but it seems like um, the those two organizations are Marxist, and they aim at bringing this country down. They make no bones about it. They want to completely reestablish a new country, tear the existing one down, and reestablish a new one. BLM doing it off a of basis of what Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I'm, you can tell that to Clarence Thomas. Tell that to Thurgood Marshall. Uh, there's plenty of <laughs> there's plenty of very intelligent black people that likely do not support the BLM movement because it has a it has an undersurface black power black panther uh, motive to it. And and, and 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 the interesting thing is that it's likely funded by uh, white people, isn't it? Uh, George Soros. So I would have liked to seen Trump take a shot at George Soros. Absolutely. Um, and um, and um, you know Antifa totally uh, Biden totally downplaying Antifa, saying it was an idea. It, an idea. Antifa.com goes straight to the Biden Harris campaign website. It goes right to JoeBiden.com. Antifa.com takes you right to JoeBiden.com. Why didn't Trump bring that up? Uh, why didn't Trump hit on 
uh, George Soros. Um, you know, and, and, and what I'd like to see, what I'd like to see him do is I would have liked to heard Trump mention the word corruption. There's vast and rampant corruption in this country. Um, and the Democratic Party, it's true, has been attacking the Trump presidency since day one. There's no doubt about that. There's absolutely no doubt about that. The whole impeachment thing and then the COVID thing comes up after the impeachment thing. They have been trying to destroy that man and dismantle his administration since day one. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as cool as Biden kept his demeanor and as, uh, uh, out of control as seemed Trump was at times and the inability for Chris Wallace to moderate successfully, um, again, it's symbolic of the state of this union, um, you know the 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 union is in disarray. Um, we've got <laughs> we've got some major challenges facing this country, and um, and, and 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 so I I, I I I I put myself in this situation mentally, and how I would react if I was you know both sides are calling each other liars. Um, you know, why didn't Trump bring up pedophilia? California SB 145. You know, this is a democratic movement. It's a, it's a homosexual pedophilia law that just passed through the Gavin Newsom just signed it. Uh, you know, why wasn't that not brought up? All of the, all these cities, Chicago, New York, Portland, they're all burning. They're all allowing these BLM Antifa people to loot, riot. The other thing that, that stood out to me was, um, you know, Joe Biden taking a shot at Donald Trump walking out of the White House over to the church, taking, you know, his military and then the protesters, if you will, being pepper sprayed or what rock salt, whatever was thrown at them. Um, yeah, Biden said that was a peaceful protest. Well, <laughs> there was nothing peaceful about that. As far as I remember the reports, the church that Trump stood in front of with the Bible um, was boarded up. Was that because the windows were boarded to protect them from being broken because rocks were being thrown around by the so-called peaceful protesters? And this is where I have a major issue. And frankly, I think both parties are corrupt, but this is where I have a major issue with the Democratic Party at the moment. They are fostering, just like Kamala Harris, they are fostering and provoking and promoting this Unrest, civil unrest, and this uh, hostility. Kamala Harris has is on record for saying this must continue. Uh, there's nothing peaceful, really, coming out of her agenda, in my view, in regards to the BLM and the Antifa movement. She supports this stuff going on. She supports she supports these violent, chaotic scenarios. Uh, from 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 what I have heard her say, and. Biden dodging around and saying that was a peaceful protest at the White House. No, these people were literally trying to get into the White House and drag Donald Trump out and kill him. That is what I believe they were trying to do. And that's why you heard Trump reply and say, they'll go after you too. Rand Paul being uh, being assaulted, walking home from the uh, from the, from the candidacy declaration, what it was um, that was held in the lawn of the White House. Uh, yeah, I, so if I was in Donald's position, would I be hostile? Very likely. Would I be um, would I be boasting and 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 boasting my chest and and and, and overriding? The mudslinging that was happening toward, toward me, absolutely. Would I be uh, would I be over talking these people? Absolutely. You know, Chris Wallace was unable to um, was unable to establish any type of respect, and that's that's an issue he has. 
he needed you know he I think both of those candidates disrespected how he was how he was handling and man uh, and managing that debate. Um, America's on fire. This country is being torn, and you've got you got a choice. You can you can side with Biden Harris and embrace communistic socialistic policies, which I believe is being, which I personally believe is being uh, fed and pushed by international banking to get an established, you should call it the Great Reset, to get an established one world uh, a, a currency, you know, whether that's projected for 2030 or when that projected date is. But there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that the middle class in the in this country in the in America is 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 a target, and is is meant to be destroyed. That's that's what communism does, right? That's what communism does. You know, it gives a very few small percentage of people the wealth, i.e., what's happened with Bezos and Gates, uh, Buffett. You know, their wealth has been skyrocketing for the past fifteen years, and has increased dramatically in the past year um, and then the rest of the people you know there's very little middle class and then the rest of the people are basically economic slaves to the state that's that's really where we're at in the United States and so it's a question of who's your lesser two evils here Biden or Trump is Trump a puppet of this deep state uh is Biden a puppet of the deep state? Absolutely, Biden is. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, Donald, I don't know. All I know is he seems to be the lesser of the two evils. Um, and it's it's really a disgrace that either one of those men is 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 where they're at today. Nothing against Donald. Nothing against him. But 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 I would I would I would assume with the with the scholastic achievements that uh, intellectual achievements, what may, may be, that Americans have been able to provide on a global scale that, that this country could certainly um, foster up a, a better candidate. Than either one of them. And this is what we were looking at with Trump and Clinton. And neither, neither one of those people were really fit for the office. Uh, and we're at, it, we're at it again in 2020. Um, I just so happen to think, and I'll tell you that I felt that Barack Obama was a very fitting person for the office. Unfortunately, <laughs> most of his policies were mostly entirely all were very communistic and socialistic. Social, socialistic. But if he, if that type of person could actually care about the Constitution and want to make America a continuum, the American legacy. Uh, of freedom and justice for all, then that type of person uh, could uh, really make a difference in this in, 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 in this country. And I think you know Donald's doing his best. But again, is he is he being pulled by some of these hidden strings? Why doesn't he call out George Soros for funding um, these racial equality movements? Because he is. You can, you can find it right on his website. Um. So, you know, these are these are. It, I think, I, I think both candidates made a fool of themselves last night. Um, I guess I can give more of a pass to to Trump because he, because I like to think that he realizes the gravity of what's happening in this country, and Biden, I think. Um, sits a bit up on a, a pedestal, having worked in D.C. for 47 years as it is, uh, doesn't quite understand, and he's and he's completely, completely bought out by the international corporate interests. Um, whether Trump is or isn't, I don't know. I, I don't know. But again, he seems to be the, the lesser of, of, of two evils. Um, so we look forward to the to the next debate. And uh, hopefully Donald can uh, keep more of his composure uh, and and simply drive in drive in the darts 
during his allotted time, during that two-minute time, were necessary, and not talk over people, because uh, you know I don't. I, that's just that's just not that's just not becoming. I don't think of any viewer. I don't. I don't know any viewer that any that 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 would have enjoyed that. Enjoyed listening to that. I certainly didn't enjoy listening to it. Um, and it and you really have to point the finger at Trump, at Donald, because he's the one that initiated it. And 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 they both. Uh, they both were doing it, um, but Trump did initiate it. Trump, Trump did did initiate it. So um, Audrey Pruitt, CEO of New Journey and Political Action Committee. Uh, PAC dedicated to exposing the lies and misdeeds of political elite in the Democratic Party. He's the author of Plain Stake in Water, defending Donald Trump, and proudly continues to support our president as he seeks to drain the swamp and restore America's place in the world. Autry is a champion of fiscal responsibility, limited government, and free market economy that fosters real growth and a sustainable economy. Autry Pruitt's speeches encourage conservatives to keep the fire burning for the restoration of family values and limited government while he challenges the false assumptions, misunderstandings, and outright lies of the Washington elite, the liberal press, and Democratic Party. He's, he is staunchly anti-socialist, anti-identity politics, and anti-swamp creature, and believes that government must work for the people, not for themselves. We're bringing him on right now. Audrey Pruitt is a black man. Let's see what he has to say. All right, bring on Audrey Pruitt. Autry. Yes. Hi there. Ian Trottier. Uh, welcome to Discussions of Truth, sir. Thank you. Um, thanks for trying to, uh, to call in, and I uh, appreciate your, your patience. Um, we'll, we'll do this audio only. I, I, I've, I've had a number uh, of requests for video, but your video's fine. Um, Autry, for listeners, uh, uh, give, a, give a brief introduction, and let's, uh, let's dive right into it, because I like what you're doing. And um, and it's much needed in in the country. Uh, give a brief introduction for listeners, and we'll go from there. Uh, my name is Archery Pruitt. I'm the CEO of New Journey Political Action Committee. Former uh, real estate developer myself. Uh, former uh, syndicated radio national radio host. Uh, we are a political action committee that's dedicated to moving the black vote, both short term and long term, from the blue column to the red column. Excellent. So this is this is this is much needed at this time, right? Because we've got we've got this. Let me just ask you. Let me just ask you, Autry. What's your what's your take on the Black Lives Matter movement? Well, the Black Lives the Black Lives Matter movement is a movement movement that's designed to do three things. The first thing is designed to do is to appease white guilt. Second thing is designed to do is to take those who have white guilt and move their money out of their pockets to those of Black Lives Matter pockets. And I don't necessarily mean them individually trying to take advantage. I think it's well known what they're trying to do. They're not trying to scheme it. They're not trying to scam it. They're not trying to steal it. They've come right out and said what they're uh, about. And the third thing that it's trying to do is to move us towards a so more socialistic, Good. communist style state. Yeah. Those are the three goals of Black Lives Matter. And so far, they have been marching towards successfully their goals. Yeah, and, 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 and Autry, you know, what can you weigh in as far as let's see, so so the Black Lives Matter initially it it, 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 it seems to be a an extension of the Black Panther movement that it, that birthed in Oakland, California. Um, I, I know there's some ties, and 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 at least one of the three female founders is, I believe, from Oakland. Um, but there's this whole angle of it being funded by George Soros. What what do you what do you take on that? What's your take on that, uh, Autry? Um, so we do have some confirmation, and although you have to go really deep to discover, we do have some confirmation that George Soros is where the, and, and about four to five other powerful Democratic families are a part of the funding apparatus to Black Lives Matter, meaning that George Soros may give $100 million to a particular foundation, not just his Open Society Foundation, but to a foundation, and then that foundation 
gives the Black Lives Matter. But I don't, I, I don't subscribe yep. to they are that George Soros is the major funder. This is actually what makes it so dangerous because if George Soros was the major funder, we would say, aha, he's the major funder. Okay. If you, if you really want to know who the major funder is, you just have to Google it. NFL committed them roughly seventy million of two hundred of two hundred million committed overall. Um, Apple has committed ten million of a hundred million to them. Netflix committed five million. Airbnb committed a million. So this is so what makes this so what's so alarming about Black Lives Matter is that this is not Soros funded. This is corporate America funded. Wow. Okay. So yeah, th this is you know, and you've got LeBron James now. You know, is is whatever he's donating his time and and his money to try to bring out the black vote. But again, it's 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 kind of on this premise of of the BLM. What do you take of uh, George Floyd? And 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 I've had other uh, other folks on the program that have spoken about this coming from an African American point of view. But Autry, uh, you know, is there is there systematic racism that is that is this severe of a problem in this country? What do you take of the George Floyd and, and even the Breonna Taylor uh, 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 incidents? So, uh, of, of three questions asked. First of all, there is not a systemic or systematic racism. In every single country in the world, in every single group where we have human beings, there are simply, uh, for lack of a better term, buttholes. I won't say what I was going to say. <laughs> um, that exists. <laughs> there are people who are racist and they will be racist forever. All right, let's clear that up right now. And that goes for, say, for any, yeah, that, that, that goes for any ethnicity, doesn't it? Is that what you're saying? Any ethnicity, but to say right now that in the era of LeBron James, in the era of Oprah Winfrey, in the era of Robert Johnson, in the era of Kenneth Chenault, in the era of Barack and Michelle Obama, in the era of 50 Cent, Lil Wayne, need I go on to say Morgan sure. Freeman, right. Will Smith, I mean, How about Clarence Thomas, right? Thurgood Marshall. And I'm naming people on the left. I'm not even naming Kyle Lisa Rice and Clarence <laughs> Thomas and DeForest Sortes or Autry Pruitt. I'm not naming yeah. us. To say that there's some, some type of system, it's absolutely bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers that you're in front of one, that LeBron James is in front of one of his 20 houses around the world with his $1.3 billion bank account. Oh, everybody's racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So It's, it's crazy. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead. So regarding the incidents, you asked about the incidents. Regarding Brianna, Brianna Taylor, Bri we're not equipped to handle tragedies in this country. We can get into reasons why. It has to do with our move away from faith. We're not equipped to handle tragedies in the country. Brianna Taylor was a tragedy that probably should not have happened, but the story is not as crystal clear as everybody would want to have us believe. I looked and I pulled for myself the arrest warrant. And I started there. And if you do that, don't trust me. Just Google Breonna Taylor arrest warrant. Just Google it. It's still out there. Pull it down and read it for yourself. And then with George Floyd, also a little bit more complicated. I think there was uh, over uh, an overextension by Derek Chauvin, who had a history of being a little bit overextended with the fitness that resulted in the death it should not uh, it should not have had. But even if you say, listen, this cop targeted him because he's black, that's one incident. Uh, out of what's like 700,000 police stops in a year around the country. You can't say that there are 13% there, there of the country. What, what is that? That's 40 million people, 50 million, 60 million folks right now are black. And of those, you had 20 that were unarmed shot in 2019 so far, maybe 23 in 2020. You can't say that systematic race. You, you just can't say the cops are hunting black people. We have to. We may have a policing problem in general, which we probably do, by the way, because we're over criminalized. But uh, over criminalization. But to say there's some kind of systematic crazy cops are that is it's just not true. It's not true. Yeah, I mean, you know, I never, I, I, I don't remember what to think of, of of the Rodney King incident, whether whether he was a t targeted because he was a black man, but but uh, yeah, I, I certainly remember that was what 30, 30 years ago, thirty five years ago. What? What uh, he, he? I'm not saying that there aren't some targetings. I'm not saying yeah. there aren't some really effed up police officers out there. Yeah. Right, just like that effed up police military. Just got you got serial killers. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is if I come out and make a statement and say, oh, she's 
all white men are serial killers and they all want to go in and shoot up a school. You look around and say, what are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, there's been some pockets of white guys going into school and shooting them up, but all of them? So right. That's what I'm saying about the police. Right. So, 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 Autry, where does where does this defund the police department? Where where do you stand on that? These, you know, these these. I think I just heard Austin. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but the Austin Police Department has just been defunded. Minneapolis is being defunded. Uh, and and it, what do you what do you take of that? Where where does that make any sense? Well, I'll, I'll, any of the police departments being defunded is is absolutely insane. Yep. What's really needed with the police is just a bigger apparatus of training such as the military has. A style of training. The military, the, I, I know some Marines, I did Air Force ROTC myself, I, I understand some of the intricacies. And one of the intricacies that you notice when they're dealing with training is they create a bond. They try to train in such a way so they create a bond within uh, the force. And they create such a bond that amongst themselves they say, hey, we don't tolerate you internally acting outside of bounds. So we're and, and think about it, the US Army brings in all sorts of troubled people. And they're able to bring them in, retrain them, regroup them without incident. Police officers could, police departments, excuse me, could do the same thing for police officers, could bring them in, retrain them, recondition them. We yeah. do it in the military. It's just a matter of us rethinking how we train uh, police officers to be more effective and taking department policy and shifting that as well. But it doesn't. But but we have to ignore the notion of defunding the police. Those are taking money. That's that's absolutely crazy. Because because as soon in Minneapolis and in Portland they started. I mean, they drove the mayor out of his home for God's sakes. Yeah. It's just a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. And, 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 and everyone knows it's a lie. Even, and I'm not talking about left or right. It doesn't matter. Everybody knows it's a lie. If you want some laws changed, then change the laws. If you want to say, hey, you got one busted taillight, cops should not be pulling you over for that. They shouldn't be stopping you for that, especially if it's broad daylight. They just should not be doing it. Then change the law. And say, this is not something we pull people over for. We got cameras. We'll send you a letter. Yeah. Yeah. Good 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 point there, Autry. Um I I, I don't know where uh, so so let's just let's 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 go down the let's go down that road of of uh let's get into uh the presidential debate. I'm assuming you you, you watched it perhaps. Did you watch it last night? Yes. Yes, yes. Um you know, I, I what do you what what do you what do you what are your your takeaways from that? Uh, what are your takeaways from that on the on the surface level? My my takeaway, the biggest takeaway, the the, the, the well, the biggest. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you two. The first takeaway I'll, I'll concern myself with. I'm not concerned with Joe Biden. I'm I'm so sick of conservative. They're coming out conservatives. Oh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't care. We should care about what Trump does and doesn't do because he needs to get the votes. He needs to get the undecided swing voters, so-called independent voters, whatever that means. He needs to get them. So I don't care what Joe Biden does. I care what Trump does. Because all of us know Trump has the capability inside of him. He has the tenacity, the intellect, the fortitude to get those voters and keep them. He did it once before, he can do it again. He has spent 15 years, 20 years now, on the national stage of TV, 99.9% Q rate. For those of you who don't know, Q rating is, is how many people know you in the country. So he's got 99.9% Q rating. Only like babies that can't talk haven't heard of Trump. And so we know that's where I concentrate. So with that in mind, I say two things. One, Trump has to bring the full breadth of his intellectual capabilities to the debate. By that I mean it's not enough. Because Trump is not only debating Biden, he's not only debating Wallace but he's debating MSNBC, CNN, ABC, CBS, sure. and even Fox yeah. News commentators. Right, right, right. So when he's on the debate stage, it's, no, it's not fair. It is not freaking fair, but it is what it is. So Trump has to bring his A game, and part of his A game is when he said, he can't make a blank statement and say, he should not, let me phrase it, he should not make a blank statement and say, well, your idea is going to crash the economy. Okay, why? What are the results? What historically? 
Because all of us that are students of this will say, yes, yes, of course, we've seen this done before. He could point to Venezuela and say, listen, Venezuela right. tried your policy, and guess what? Toilet paper is $700 a roll. So that's, that's the little extra that Trump is needed to bring home. The second thing he has to do is he's got to be the president he is during the State of the Union, not the president he is on Twitter. There is a difference between the two. <laughs> I understand it. I love it. I love Trump fighting back. But the facts are he's got to get the 10% to move his way. And I don't think this debate did anything for anybody, to be truthful with you. Maybe partisans, but I don't think it moved anybody in any direction. Okay? I think what, he, what he's got to do is come in there and be substantially different. Don't defy, don't spend all your time trying to, oh, buy and buy and buy. Don't spend, spend time devoting what you, you know, what you should do. Right. That's what you should do. And that's what, that's what this debate prep is for. That's what the, the people for are around him. Now, that being said, Trump did better than any current sitting president has done. Because most of them, Bill Clinton, Obama, their first debates, horrible. Bush, horrible. Because they've been insulated and hadn't had any really pushback. But since Trump's been fighting, and, and that's part of the nature, right? He's been pushed and fought against so hard, he just came out swinging for the president. Right, exactly. And, and I think it's just, it takes a little bit of extra to say, okay, I'm not going to swing for this. So the next debate I would encourage him with Joe is let Joe talk himself down. Because Joe doesn't know what he's talking about. And the more Joe talks, people say that. <laughs> so just let Joe talk and let him have the stage. Let yeah. Him and Chris Wallace had the stage. Absolutely, that's that's that was exactly my. Those are those are those are some of my thoughts as well, Autry. I felt like he needed to. Uh, well, you know, I, I I I talking out of line and speaking over the. It was just a reflection of his frustration and really symbolic of the chaos that's happening across the country with these cities burning and and whatnot. And I felt like if he was a little more if he was a little more methodical in his approach to attacking. Uh, Joe Biden, and again, letting Joe make a fool of himself, because like like you just said, Joe does make a fool of himself if he's given the chance to talk. Unfortunately, yeah. Donald didn't give him the chance to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, and what do you make of Biden's response to Antifa being an idea? Well, Biden, I mean, it's, Biden's response was a lie. Biden, if he has his brain together, which I, I actually sort of think he probably does, maybe slow, but he still has it there, he knows it's a lie. And he knows the media. This, usually what happens is this. The Democratic president is running. The media ride the coattails of the Democratic president. But that's not what's happening this time. The media is creating the narrative and the framework, and Biden's team this time is smart enough to say, hey, whatever lie the media is telling, we're going to hop on it. So this thing with Biden was no surprise because... Um, the guy that's the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, Jerry Nadler. Nadler said, Antifa, that's a Republican talking point. That's a lie. <laughs> right? The you all the Democrats. So it's no surprise that he said, oh, Antifa's an idea. You know, that's no surprise. We shouldn't be surprised about that. Because all Joe Biden is, Joe Biden is not leading anywhere. Right. He's a generic Democrat candidate that's hopping on that's to right. whatever the media says. That's right. Because he understands there's a substantial portion of the country that's going to say, hey, if, oh, I hear the CNN, MSNBC saying it, blah, 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 blah. And remember, when you and I hear CNN, we hear garbage. We hear crap or MSNBC. But most people, these are legit news organizations. Right. <laughs> right. So I'm serious. They're legit news organizations. Yeah, yeah. People have spent years on branding to make sure of this. So when they hear the stuff over and over again, they might be, okay, there's something to it, there's something going, and he's just riding it. That's why Joe Biden kept pushing the point, Trump's a liar, Trump's a liar, Trump's a liar. It doesn't matter the fact that Biden may be lying about Trump lying. It matters the fact that the media, for the past four years, has created this box and a narrative, always saying Trump is a big liar, Trump is a big liar, and he over-exaggerates. And Biden is hitching his wagon to that uh, horse. Right, and so so let's get let's 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 p 
peel back a little bit more, you know, you're 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 bringing up these the NFL and and the NBA and Apple. You didn't mention NBA, but but uh, some of these some of these corporations and in, in, in athletic leagues donating millions of dollars. You mentioned Airbnb donating in millions of dollars to BLM. And frankly, Autry, I see BLM. Of course, all li- Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. You brought up uh, great examples of wonderful Black people that made great contributions. Uh, you know, I mean, India, Indians, Asians. It doesn't matter. That's the beauty of 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 the country we live in. And we can thank a lot of that to people like Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King or whoever it may be that pre, pre, uh, preceded us. But the fact of the matter is, if you come to this country, there's no other country in the world that you're given a, an opportunity on really a level slate. If you work hard and, 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 and study right and do, do the right things, you can you can build yourself up to being a productive human being. Uh, you can't do that really in any other country, uh, not at the magnitude that you can in, in this country. So BLM really being a a, a, a Marxist organization, in, in, in my view, and, and it seems like the two of them, Antifa and BLM, are in cahoots. That's what I what it looks like to me. What are some of the strings behind um, uh, that are that are that are pushing this? Is 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 there an organized effort? Is it coming from BLM, or is there is there something else that's pushing up all of this funding that's coming from these various organizations? Is there something that's hidden here? Do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I believe it is. First, I think Antifa and BLM are necessarily in cahoots. What they realized was they had a mutual interest. So Antifa's out there being stupid. BLM comes along and hitches to Antifa. So, and, and they both, I, I think that when you spend years in the same orthodoxy, yeah. you don't have to call somebody up and tell them the plan. If you spend enough time with each other, if you spend enough time with communism, you understand right. where they're going, right? I don't coordinate with any of our candidates as a pack because we can't. But I've spent enough time in, in marketing and messaging. I understand where they're headed and where they're going. And so I'm able to structure a plan around what the candidates we are are doing just because I've been in it long enough. I know how to play. And I think it's the same thing. Right. Antifa wants to do this destruction. BLM needs uh, cover and wants to be able to extort people. And so they work in tandem, even if it isn't them sitting around a physical table being in cahoots. In terms of what's undergirding this, I'm different than most. What's really undergirding this and the money push is the academics, is the university level intellects. That's what's happened. Because the people with money, I've been to them, I've been in this world for a while. You go to the, I'm sure you have to, even in Republican circles, you go to the parties, you go to the fundraisers. Oh, so and so with a PhD from Harvard and Yale and Stanford and this and that and cherry toast, <laughs> in the air, wine and cheese, blah, blah, blah. And that starts in academia. Because face it, the very rich people, LeBron, you know, other than building a school, coming and hugging some kids and stuff, they're not hanging every day on the streets with folks because that's not where the money's coming from. So the influence is coming from the the the, the, the people making money. They want to feel smart. They want to feel so great. So they invite the elites. They invite the academic elites in and this garbage that they're reading every day that they're talking about. Well, I did a study, and 17.95% in my study, all this stuff is said in their circles. And they're wine and cheese circles. And so what's happened is when these big donors, these big money people are in these elite meetings, in these circles, even during COVID, by the way, yeah. let them believe they're not all holed up in a basement somewhere with Joe. Even when they're in these circles, this is what they're talking about. And the money is following the universities. It's following the academics. So let's, That's yeah. why journalism is the way it is. Yeah, that's there's there's a good tie-in, and 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 of course I I like to get into the Council on Foreign Relations, and there's you know there's there's different kind of organizations that are that are certainly not open to the to the public where where, where some of these some of these very wealthy uh, folks uh, hobnob and, and 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 network. But let's let's get to Joe Biden, and and I know that he's. He's talked about a because I think we're we're looking at an ideology ideology here. I mean, the, the Democratic Party, as far as I can see, is 
that's our best hope for <laughs> for for communism in in America. So if so if listeners listeners want to receive socialism and communism into this country, then then go down the Biden the Biden route and Biden Harris route. That's that's coming from me um, if from from what I see it. But let's let's take this. Let's take uh, you you mentioned COVID. Where would you stand, Autry? Where would you stand if Joe Biden made a national mandatory uh, mask? Uh, ordinance it, or it's law. It's so silly. It's so, it's, it's so, first of all, number one, if he did it, if you have a court works to assault, they would strike it down. There is nothing in the Constitution about wearing a mask. It's, it doesn't exist. <laughs> this mask thing should be dealt with at the state level. It should not even approach the federal government level. And the response is, you have a state governor. You should know who your governor is. If I was, if I was president right now, that's what I'd be telling you. I would say, it is it, the fact that more of you know who I am than your governor. That's a problem. You need to know who your governor is. Sure. And every state should be making decisions. And some big states like California and Texas, they may push their decisions down to the county level because their states are so expansive. Right. Right. But this is not going to be a matter of mandate from the federal government. We're not going to get in the business of telling you if you have to wear a mask. We're going to let the state governors do that. We're going to let the state governors decide. And people generally do regionally. And so you can say, as president, I'm opening off the White House. I'm opening up any facilities so the governors you can come here regionally maybe the northeast region new jersey uh, new york delaware maryland dc maybe that excelsior corridor there massachusetts maybe they decide you know we got a lot of travel between us so we are as a group we're going to do mask right uh, maybe the southern region says you know the wind blows down here differently we got allergies <laughs> we got a lot of people wearing that you know yeah. we don't want a, really a mask mandate do yeah. it that let the individual states decide. This is not rocket scientists. And I'm tired of Republicans jumping on the bandwagon saying, this is amazing. I'm not, I heard Republicans say, no mask mandate. I heard Republicans say, I would go with Joe Biden and just let it go. But where's the Republican to stand up and say, this is a state decision? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about what about vaccines? What about it? How do you feel about vaccines? What if there was a mandatory vaccination push, uh, push I'm, nationally? I'm not, I'm not for mandating that anybody pushes anything into their body. That's not the government's role. I'm not saying this is this is important. I'm not talking about the legitimacy or non-legitimacy of the vaccine. I'm not saying whether people should take it or shouldn't take it. I'm saying that when you get into the notion of a government telling you you have to take a needle yeah. and inject it into your leg and pump in some chemicals, that is a step too far. And if we're going to get to that notion, that needs to be a constitutional amendment, that the government has a right to tell you to pump your body full of something. Yeah, which which would not happen. So so what sense does it make for a guy like Bill Gates, who's made his fortune in uh, computer uh, software, what, what sense does it make? And, and by the way, his since he's, quote, Donated his 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 wealth to uh, to philanthropy and the healthcare. Uh, his 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 fortune is uh, almost doubled. Well, what sense does it make for him to be pushing seven billion vaccinations, seven billion people vaccinated? He wants to vaccinate the entire planet. What sense does that make? Well, it makes sense for him because he's a good soul guy. <laughs> he's got him and base all these all these tech guys. Even Elon Musk, to some extent, he's the more libertarian of them. They're all sort of this control, like, we know better, we're going to move humanity, right. we're going to. A part of freedom means death. And we got to get comfortable with that. Americans used to be comfortable with that. Again, I blame the school system. A part of freedom is understanding, okay, maybe some top-down control you can save more lives, but I would rather have my freedom in an early death Oh yeah. than to have 90 years spent in a mask being injected in my butt every day. That's right. Chemicals. Well said, Autry. Well said. Uh, we 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 can push it even further because uh, we got some crazy things happening in California. What about, what are your thoughts on SB one forty five? You familiar? What's that? So that's the law that was pushed through by the senator out of San Francisco uh, to basically make uh, homosexual pedophilia legal. Gavin Newsom oh, just signed on it a week ago. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh man, the left has been so much. I completely forgot. Oh, I'm like SB 145. Okay, so this is this is the deal. This is the deal. 
the, I don't know what's going on out there in California. <laughs> and I say this. California, at the risk of offending some people that are live in Florida. Te- I, I live in Florida. I, actually, I love Florida. California may be just... I have not been to Hawaii yet. That's the only state. The last section is pretty beautiful, too. But California just... It may be, like, the most beautiful, like, just aesthetically beautiful state. I, 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 it just may be. There's a good argument to make. And I'm telling you, man, you guys out there in, in La La Land, y'all have <laughs> lost it. Y'all have lost it. And you cannot... What I think of it is... What I think of this is really simple. Um, this, I, I cannot believe I have... Daughters myself, and I cannot believe that mm. everyday parents agree with, it. even in California, agree with this nonsense. This is liberal garbage. Yeah, pushed by liberals, and but it doesn't surprise me. I mean, the second you can say to someone, "Oh yes, it's okay to give your seven-year-old hormones because they believe they're a girl trapped in a boy's bottle or a boy mm. trapped in a girl's body," so you can tell you, so your seven-year-old can't make a decision to have sex with anybody. Your seven-year-old can't make a decision to get pregnant or not pregnant, but all of a sudden they have the mental capacity, the life experience, the right. wisdom to be able to change your gender. Yeah, yeah. This is what happens when you start substituting common freaking sense. Then that's the next step. And the next step after this, I want you to record this down because people can say you're crazy, you're crazy, Archer, you're crazy. The next step is bestiality. Oh, marry a cat. Wow. Wow. Listen, we, I know people want to say, <laughs> oh my God, you're exaggerating, you're exaggerating, you're exaggerating. Right? When people said, hey, they're going to take you stuff to the street and start shooting cops in the head. No, they're not. You're just kidding. Hey, they've been spending, spying on the Trump campaign. No, no, they haven't. This looks like a coordinated <laughs> effort amongst the FBI and the military industrial complex. No, no, it wasn't. Wow. So where we are. Wow. <laughs> so if, if pedophilia, I've marked my words, if pedophilia is allowed to get sanctioned, in the state of California, then you're going to have tons of academics pushing white papers and research at UC Berkeley, at UC Davis, at UC Irvine, at Stanford, etc. Then that garbage is going to filter to the other Ivies over on the east side at Harvard and Yale and Brown, and then we're going to be repositioning. They're going to be going back to Greek historical records and, and talk about how professors used to sleep with kids, and it was, an, it was an, a part of growing up then. Then the next step, the next step is going to be, if you've eliminated God, you've eliminated gender, then oh. why can't you sleep with your cat? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well... <laughs> You you recorded, so if that if that comes to light, then uh, then then that'll that'll be on you. But I don't think it's that far fetched. I, I don't think that's uh, that far fetched, Autry. Um, okay, so if you met a person, if you met a person today who says I hate people, I'm in love. Let's say you met sure, I love sure. my dog. Yeah, and this this human being had sex with an animal. Do you think they vote for Trump or Biden? <laughs> Do you think the person having sex with their dog is voting for Trump or they're voting for Biden? Who is the person they're going to vote for that's in their best interest? Wow. No, that's 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 a very good uh, ideology there. That's that's a good approach. I and and and, and I I think you're you're you're. <laughs> You may be on to something. Is is Joe Biden a pedophile? I mean, there's been accusations that he is. What do you think? Joe Biden is a crusty old man. <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference. Trump <laughs> is an old man that likes women, and then he doesn't really go around doing anything. He likes to talk. You know, he's at New York. Oh, I like the women. I tough, grab them. You know, all that stuff he was saying. Joe Biden is a crusty old dude who doesn't keep his hands to himself. Woo. But I think he's a pedophile? No. Because a pedophile usually requires two two people to interact. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the California law is based around consent, that you as a minor right. consent to pedophilia. Right. Jo- 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 <laughs> Joe Biden, he's just running around touching folks. He's a crusty old guy. This guy's like, oh, you know, get away. 
Wow. Get over there. I can feel you behind me, man. Get get back. What what Autry, what was missing from uh from the debate yesterday? What what did what would you have liked? A huh? A moderator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Somebody that yeah, any any employed by Fox News. Chris Wallace and his father, Mike Wallace. Chris Wallace has I've seen Chris Wallace, and despite Republicans beating up on him a little bit, Chris Wallace knows how to be a journalist. He knows how to say and I would have said this. I would have said, gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm gonna say this one time. One time. It's in both of your interests best to let me ask a question. You get two minutes, you get two minutes. I'm gonna ask the question. And if you choose to both choose to talk to each other and go to each other, you two are grown men. You're both older than me. Right. I would have just said, I would have just said, I would have said it one time, and that's it. And then ask the questions and let them stand back. Let them go at it. Right. Maybe that's what that was missing. Yeah. I think the two minute thing is problematic. Actually, I really believe that you should say, this is how it works. I'm going to ask a question. You get five minutes, you get five minutes. Then you get two minutes, and then you get two minutes. Right. And Seven minute totals for a substance. I mean, you're electing the president of the country for a second. You know, COVID is decided in two minutes? Come on. That's what we've come down to. We've come down to Twitter debates. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and in a in a in a debate scenario in the family room setting, there are no time limits. The the, the person that wins is the winner, right? Or there is no winner. Uh, it happens naturally, so you make you make a good point. Um, Autry, talk a little bit about uh, New Journey, uh, a political action committee. Talk talk about about that for for listeners. New Journey PAC political action committee. We're doing a great great work. You can go to newjourneypac.org. That's N E W Journey. The word Journey P A C PAC. Newjourneypac.org. Uh, look at our work. Not all of our stuff is up there because some are holding close to the vest because we're still releasing out stuff, pushing out in certain areas. But you can see the work we're doing. We're doing both short-term and long-term engagement. Short-term is stuff like now, the electioneering, the political ads. But the long-term engagement, if you look at our staff, especially for a PAC, you're going to be like, wow, these guys have an explosive staff, right? That's because we're building up a long-term project to move the black vote to move it out of the blue column and into the red column. It did not move into the red column overnight. It's not going to move out overnight, right? So what we have to do, like they say, it takes two seconds to destroy something, 20 years to build something up. And so what we've got to do is be in blue cities, not just in the swing states, although we've started there in Chicago, in San Francisco, and we've got to be there on the ground, engaging with people, helping with people, and more important, listening to people. So New Journey Pack is dedicated to, right now, 24-7, 365 messaging that informs the truth about the Democrat regime in this country and their schemes to get the black vote, but also, and more importantly, long-term engagement so we can be on the ground so when something blows up, when there's a cop shooting, when there's an issue, when there's something local that happens, we can be there to give a historical perspective. Why is New Journey needed? It's because the universities won't do it, the high schools won't do it, junior highs won't do it, elementary schools won't do it because they're all controlled by the left. Newspapers won't do it, so somebody has to be able to do it. So even though we're a political action committee, we're a large organization dedicated to the to spreading the truth. And we believe once we spread the truth, the vote will naturally move over. Love it. And are you you have boots on the ground in San Francisco? No, we do not this cycle. That is for next cycle. Wonderful. That's for that's for the that's for uh, not next midterm cycle, but next presidential cycle. But pretty soon we will. We actually I have a a young lady out there who I think is going to be our director in California. The Republican Party just giving up on California is crazy. Yeah. From yeah. the day Trump got elected, they should have set up offices all throughout California. Right. Right. But right. We're doing. We're doing. We're Republicans, so we're not going to rely on the Republican bureaucracy. We love them. God bless them. We support them. Thumbs up. Keep going. We're voting for you. But we're going to do what you all do because we can do it. Ah, well said. Yeah, Orange County's got uh, quite a bit of a Republican base, I understand. Might be uh, might be attacked. Uh, that, that's a good start, and I believe those San Francisco and some of these other places do. And by the way, when I say Republican, let me be a little bit more. We're saying conservative-leaning. 
Yeah. The idea that somebody should be allowed to burn down your business because of something that happened 20 states away? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ludicrous. Absolutely and disgusting. You, that you have to sacrifice your business to the mob of ideas? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and what's the website listeners can go to, Autry? Newjourneypack.org. P-A-C. Newjourneypack.org. Yeah, our founder is James Golden, also known as Bo Snurley from the Rush Limbaugh program. I speak to him almost every day. Great, great gentleman. I'll tell you the story the next time I'm on. But newjourneypack.org, you can go there, you can contribute, donate. That's what we need. we got to keep it going. we got to keep the fight going. Lights on, people paid, and keep our ads pushing. we got some great, great ads, great ads. Ladies and gentlemen, CEO of New Journey, a political action committee, Autry Pruitt. Autry, thank you for joining Discuss Your Truth. Looking forward to bringing you back on, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There he is. That is a conservative black man um, fighting very hard in uh, based out of Florida. And you know what? You know, speaking of speaking of Florida, uh, why does it take? Okay, you know, I'm, I'm. Why does it take a Latin guy, DeSantis, to grab his cojones and put his foot down and say, "No, my state is." Releasing all, I don't know if they released or eased all COVID-19 mandates, we're going back to work. You know, then I get I get a phone call the other day, and, oh, Miami-Dade wants to override the governor governor's orders. I, I got I I to say it, all right, yes, I'm a white person, okay, I'm a white man, fine. It, 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 doesn't, it, doesn't, it shouldn't, shouldn't mean anything to you, right? It shouldn't mean anything to you. And DeSantis is a Latin name. It's not an English name. And my name is French. Who cares? At the end of the day, it's all about being an American and upholding the constitutional values. And that's what I care about. And violence is a very weak form of making change. Okay? Nobody wants to not go home to their family at night. Everybody wants to go home and snuggle with their kids and their significant other. All right, and we cannot figure out as a species how to obtain that, can we? And instead, we have to bring about violence to make change, and really unjustified by violence in this BLM and Antifa uh, garbage that's happening. Uh, it's very unjustified, in, in my opinion. But it takes it takes the governor of Florida. No, no other, no other governors in this state will do it. No other governors in the state will do it. And you've got you've got great leaders that you would think would put their foot down and put an end to some of this garbage. Yes. I think wearing a mask should be an individual choice. Period. Period. I'm Totally behind Autry in saying that that should not be federal jurisdiction. Yet you got Biden saying he would make it federal jurisdiction. Let's hope. Let's hope that Autry's right and they would get thrown out in the court. I don't even think it should be a state by state jurisdiction. It should be a an American by American jurisdiction. You you want to wear a hazmat suit to go down and buy your groceries? Wear a hazmat suit. You want to lock yourself up in in in? I mean, Trump said it yesterday. They're like prisons. Some of these states are like prisons. Make it an individual choice. The individual. You want to stay locked up in your house? Put yourself in the bathroom all day. Do whatever you want. Wear a hazmat suit. Okay? Put Lysol or bleach on your food. I'm making pun of really Trump's retort in that speech last night, the, the debate last night. This should be an individual by individual decision. But this is why it's not, folks. This is why it's not. Because the strings that pull the Federal Reserve, which is a private central bank in the United States, are 
international, and they are communistic. And they have been communistic since 1913. Go back to the episode with Tom Hartman. He was on the program four weeks ago. And he talked about the problem that monopolies have had in this country. So you want an ideology, Joe Biden? You want an ideology? Antifa.com takes you right to JoeBiden.com. I mentioned that initially. I believe I just mentioned that initially as I opened this show. You want an ideology, Joe? Communism is an ideology. Monopolies are a practice of that ideology. Have you ever put those two together? Right. I mean, just think about it. The Rockefeller. They had a monopoly on oil production. What are the parallels between a monopolistic practice in a business and a communistic practice from another business, which is a government? You got the left that wants big government. That's big business. That's closer to communism, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, you got the right that wants small government, feeling that everybody should be managing themselves. You should be a good, upright citizen, behaving properly by yourself. Small government, small business, big middle class. Big business means shrink, shrinking middle class, doesn't it? doesn't it? Servando Gonzalez, Cuban-born historian, American author, Cuban-American author, he said, right on this program, about eight months ago, a little more than that, nine, he said, Ian, what happened in Cuba under Fidel Castro, a CIA operation was the testing ground for what is meant to unroll in America. And we are seeing that happen. In my view, that is what this BLM Antifa movement is all about. Causing civil unrest. And if they have their choice, they will overthrow the government. Um... Uh, Autry brought up another good point. Venezuela. Trump needs to come into that next debate with bigger firepower, much harder firepower. He attempted to establish his dominance by speaking over Biden and speaking over the moderator, who is very weak, but it should have been a very fitting situation to be a weak moderator. He shouldn't have had to flex any muscle or shout. Um, and I feel that Trump went about establishing dominance in the wrong way. And again, I think it's a reflection of his frustration and how he has been attacked since day one in his office. He's had the impeachment proceedings. He's had the COVID-19 baloney. bogus garbage thrown at him and attack his economy. Why? The Great Reset. The Great Reset. The Great Reset. Yeah, George Soros, World Economic Forum, Davos. It's all about, look at Prince Charles in England. It's all about the Great Reset. It doesn't take much to go back in history and say, what? was the ruling power that established these European colonies and these continents. 
that room, ruling power, folks, Rome. Rome, Rome, Rome. And you would say, well, no, Rome, well, Mexico was, Mexico became Mexico because of the Mexica, the Mexica Indians. Yeah, right, right. well, with that, right, the Spaniards originally wrote Me Mexico as M-E-J-I-C-O. They pronounced it Mexico. And that's why the Mexicans pronounced their country Mexico. But the X, the X, is actually a sh sound. So it literally should be Mexico because of the Aztec tribes, the Mexicas. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. Yes, they speak Spanish in Mexico, in Mexico, don't they? Where does Spanish come from? From Spain, however... The early part, uh, the early centuries of the establishment of New Spain, which later became known as Mexico, where were the taxes sent? And where were the tithes from the cathedrals and the churches sent? Yep, they all went back to Spain, but they channeled back to the dominant religion, which was, and still is, Catholicism. Mm -hmm. That would be the one and only Vaticano, the Vatican. Okay. Am I taking a shot at the Vatican? You betcha. You betcha. Because so many of these veins, if you will, of the monster that is taking over America and giving it its best shot to take you over and make you its slave, run right back to Rome. Don't make any mistake about it. Not much has changed since the days of the Mayflower. And don't let this ridiculous racial inequality excuse sidetrack you and brainwash you. All lives matter, folks. Certainly black lives matter. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not a black man. I'm not saying it, but we were just joined by one, by one that said it. Autry Pruitt's a very black person, black man. And so is um, Sharika that joined us a few weeks ago. A very black-skinned woman Okay, that actually had an issue with people like Barack Obama that are biracial calling themselves black. So how do you feel if you're black, black, if your skin's black? I hope you feel great about yourself because you're a beautiful person and you know better because you have a great country to be beautiful in. But the BLM movement, no, I got a problem with that. I got a big problem with it because that's a violent, non-peaceful, Movement. Now I got. I've got a problem with it. Okay. So follow the roads to Rome, folks, through Switzerland. Why is Switzerland neutral? Hmm. Banking. Right. Protecting gold. Valuable assets. Things to think about. Things to consider as you ponder the military-industrial complex. And again, whether you, whether you ponder. What's the better of the two evils? If you're stepping back and you're saying, hey, this is the best America can provide is a choice between Biden and Trump, who's the lesser of two evils? <laughs> I mean, Archer I said it pretty well. If you as an individual have ever considered or would ever consider having sexual intercourse with an animal or you think that people like that would have a political view, which candidate do you think they would side with? No, no, I don't think it'd be Trumpster. Don't think so. Folks, this has been another discussion of truth, and I appreciate you listening to it, whether you listen on iTunes, whether you listen live on StopMassMedia.com. However you listen to me, I appreciate you listening. Coming up on four years of doing this program, and... We continue providing a service for all of you, regardless of where you are in the country or where you are in the, in the world, because I know I've got Canadian listeners, 
uh, folks in England, Germany. Um, and this is a global problem because the global economic order is making a move. That's what this is all about. I leave you with the term, or excuse me, the phrase, the Great Reset. And until next week, and I'm going to make an attempt to, well, this may be, anyway. Until next week, folks, spread the word and be awesome.